up everybody today I'm going to talk about how to create the dead mouse pluck so this com this is coming directly from day seven of dead mouse masterclass uh, so I do a bunch of summaries uh, day by day to uh, for people to understand like what was taught so we can talk about it we can share some knowledge and I can learn something in the process so um, actually it was quite simple to be honest with you uh, as he was dialing in the uh, uh, the pluck uh, in serum so I want to just kind of go through that a little bit and uh, show you how that was done um, I'll, I will also be putting these you know settings that he used uh, in the uh, description so you have a uh, pretty good idea of exactly oops, what was done so first things first you launch serum so you can kind of copy these into different a different uh, synth as well these settings are going to be the same uh, uh, also note that he used a hardware synth to actually make the sound and he did uh, the best he could to sort of um, mimic the sound in a uh, in a soft synth uh, so essentially first you start with initializing your synth, uh, VST so it's initialized now it sounds like let me turn up the volume a little bit okay so it's a pretty basic uh, sawtooth wave all right so um, the first thing he does was turn on the, the filter okay um, and then he turns the unison on to four. And then uh, dial that. So I'm, I'll be using these uh, like references to the, uh, what do you call it? Clock references. So I'll say, for example, detune to 9 p.m. <laughs> uh, that means here, right? So I think it's a little easier for people to understand, you know, noon, 12 being top, 6 being at the bottom, 9 being on the left, 3 being at the right. Um, instead of using these like 0 0.03, you know, I just hate using those little because it. I don't think they're that. They need to be that precise. When whenever I look at tutorials, people say set this to 0 0.0125. I'm just like, come on, really? Did you really, really come up with that, or did you just dial it in and say, ah, oh, that sounds good? So. Yeah, it sounds good at 9 p.m. So detune that to 9 p.m. and blend, uh, set the blend to 3 p.m. So there that, is. there we go. Okay, that's what we got so far. Um, set LFO one attack to zero. So just take that all the way to the back. So and then take that LFO one and attach it to the cutoff. So you got a little plucky sound there. Okay, and then change the rate uh, for LFO1 to 1 8th, 1 8th, and make sure the BPM is uh, checked. Okay, and then uh, go into FX, turn on the reverb, and then set the mix to 11 p.m telling you this thing works 11 p.m. you know exactly what I'm talking about if you can look at a clock you can turn that dial uh, and set the delay to 1 8 notes left and right and then uh, take this little ball thing and come down to about uh, this is the only one where I couldn't set sorry about that text messages while I'm recording and uh, set it to like 5000 uh, F and Q 2.9 so that's just that area uh, set that to ping pong, uh, uh, the delay to ping pong, and then set the delay mix to 12 p.m. All right, there we go, have it. Um, and that, that was actually it. That was all the instructions given to uh, make this sound. But here's what I found. So first of all, you're gonna think, hey, that doesn't sound like the whole thing. So, first things first, you need to have uh, your chord structure defined of what you're trying to play, um, and then you need to make sure that you have. So you have, you gotta have the notes th that that sound good together, right? Now we ha I have other videos about chord structures and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then um, I kept adding to the um, to this patch, okay, 
uh, for example, I turned up the drive, turned up the fat, uh, uh, fatness, I guess, in, in the filter. So that kind of gave it a more girthy sound. I also turned on the sub. Uh, and it was actually on a sine wave, and I kind of left it there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, and, and I kind of did some of those and to get a little bit of a better sound. So, um, I mean, I'm not saying... Uh, it's, so Dead Mouse he basically kind of did it quickly. He said, okay, here's the basic. Right. And then I think you're supposed to kind of look at that and say, OK, well, what else can I add uh, to sort of get closer and closer to that sound just to see how that was made. Right. The idea being that you don't just use this simply, you know, as is and you kind of create your own plucks and that kind of stuff. But here's here's what I came up with once I kind of added a few more things. OK, and then this is what it sounds like once you have chords playing and then you know we're going through uh, and playing the right notes and then of course the cutoff filter is a thing that kind of gives it some life So that, um, and then also play around with other things. Like for example, if you turn the key tracking on, watch this. So you just got a kind of a wider sound with the key tracking on. Um, so yeah, and, and then you can play around. So that's the idea. Um, you know, you can really evolve a sound, um, and you don't really know what it really can end up being. You saw that when I was, uh, I just had one note hitting, right? So if I just had, let's see if I was just playing this. And I mean, you couldn't imagine that this sound could be such a amazing sounding Thing, right so I think the trick here is to first make sure that you have something that can um, uh, audition the sound 
sound for you well, right? So if you're trying to audition the sound, and you, meaning you're trying to listen to it and trying to figure out if this is the sound that you want, um, it's just it's really hard to tell because it, you know, pressing keys doesn't get you there. So what I would recommend um, is to generate a chord progression or two first that you like to hear or just use something else like you know say let's just use the veld uh something uh that's out there um and go ahead and uh, and dial in the settings and see how it affects the things see how it sounds um and then that's a better indication of what the sound can become because you're playing chords and this kind of stuff right so i guess it it just depends right if you were if you were creating a uh, let's see big room edm type thing and you needed just one plucky sound well just have a one plucky sound playing in some type of cool rhythmic pattern um, and then have that be looping while you're working on this right don't do the thing where uh, uh, which is uh, what I used to do before which is you know you just take a keyboard and start playing and then start manipulating because it's just uh, it's not gonna give you the right uh, idea of what this sound is every single tweak you do is going to give you a much better idea of what you need to build if you have the right uh, notes in the background playing while you're tweaking get what I'm saying so you when you were uh, doing sound design just have some type of MIDI file in the back playing something for you so that so you can audition the sound a bit better all right that was it that's how he made the pluck uh, try it out and let me know if uh, that works for you.